If you've ever been stuck at home sick and you're like so bored because you're incapable of sitting still and doing nothing, yeah, me too. Hey everyone, I'm Liv and welcome to The Leopard Lodge. If you're new here, this is a channel dedicated to creative projects in the home. I recently went on vacation to Donner Lake and I was pretty much just working on the channel for the first four days we were there. Please excuse the background noise. There's nothing I can do about it. People are jet skiing. And I finally decided to take a day off, chill out, and then I proceeded to get really, really sick. So sick in fact that after I took a COVID test and waited two days to get the results, I actually went to the hospital because I was really concerned about my health. It turns out I had a thing called pericarditis that's super rare and um, it was pretty scary. I'm better now, but the whole thing was kind of a wake up call for me to not work myself quite so hard. Taking time to rest is really important and I'm really, really bad at it. So anyway, being me, a person who is actually incapable of laying down and resting, I came up with a few projects that I could do to keep my hands busy and would just be like chill and soothing and creative and I wouldn't have to think too much or drag out any power tools. The popsicle stick face. I will definitely admit that I've become a sucker for the like ribbed, hamper, fluted trend that's happening right now. And I'm also really obsessed with those like slatted mid-century room dividers that I really wish I could put up in my home, except that I don't own it. So I thought that this smaller scale project would be a great way to work some of this out of my system. I found this very plain, regular cylindrical vase at the thrift store. I'm sure you can find one there or at your dollar store. And I thought it would be a really good canvas to work on this vision. I was trying to think of what I could use to cover the vase, like maybe bamboo skewers, or I had this cool multicolored sushi mat I thrifted. But I also saw these popsicle sticks and I got a pretty freaky idea. I got to work staining two packs of popsicle sticks with the Ferrothane color Gunstock, which is the perfect kind of warm mid-century color that goes really well with a lot of the wood that's already in my house. This definitely took some time and I know I look a little bit crazy hand staining popsicle sticks right now but I hope you stick with me. Yep, that's what I said. No pun intended. Since the sticks were not as tall as the base, I decided to leave the bottom two inches clear, which I thought would give it a more sculptural Why can't I say sculptural? which I thought would accentuate the sculptural aspect of the piece and allow it to be taller. I used two inches of painter's tape to block off this section and hopefully allow me to get the sticks fairly level while I glued them on, which led to the matter of gluing the sticks to the vase with my glue gun. I definitely need to replace this glue gun. It leaves a lot of glue strings everywhere that is what you get for spending $4 on a glue gun. I found it easiest to start with the base on its side, but in hindsight, I would actually recommend keeping it upright. The stick started to lean a bit instead of going straight up and down. That being said, this was actually fine because a lot of the pieces were not actually straight themselves. A lot of them were curved and warped, so I kind of just rolled with it. This allowed the shape to become a bit more organic, which I think I actually preferred to everything being completely uniform. After I made it all the way around, I took off the tape and had to use a razor blade in a few sections to get it loose. I went in and filled any gaps that I felt were too big with additional popsicle sticks. Since this was a vase, it would be coming into contact with water. 
I finished off the piece by giving it a coat of my handy waterproofing spray. And when it was dry, it was just a matter of grabbing some flowers from the garden. This next project, I'm honestly a little bit embarrassed to even call a project. But I think it can be very easily reproduced for whatever you find. I found this plate at the thrift store that I thought had a cool design on it and this bowl that I thought had a cool um, texture on it. And all I did was flip this upside down and glue this plate on top. E6000. Let's do this. Now we wait and then I spray painted the bottom flat black and then I had a really cool pedestal plate. This is so insanely simple and I really love how it turned out. Sue me. Yep, that's all I did. Please don't sue me. I don't have any money. The biggest project I embarked on was using some oven baked clay. As many of you know, I use polymer clay in my jewelry business. Available for purchase on the website, linked down below. A while back I switched my materials from Sculpey Regular to Sculpey Primo because it was just better for what I was doing. And I had this leftover Sculpey Regular and I wanted to make some fun kind of modern art inspired candlesticks but I didn't have a full vision yet. I just wanted to kind of play with some clay and hang out and watch TV, if I'm being perfectly honest. I started out making thick rolls with the clay and kind of started forming them into rings. I used an actual candlestick to measure the width that I needed to, I guess not width, diameter, circumference not diameter. I never took geometry. I used my slicer tool to get straight cuts and then I'd sort of gently press the two ends together and smooth it out to get a cohesive ring. I kept doing this to form stacks that would hold the candle and this sort of became the theme of my project. I wound up making a white candlestick holder and then going back later and making a second one that would complement it. I don't really know where this idea came from, but I started making this kind of long, long roll that I wanted to use to somehow attach the two candle holders together. And then I kind of wound up making this weird, snaky sculptural thing that I actually thought was pretty cool and kind of became the inspiration for the remainder of my projects. I thought the clay would shrink when baked, but it would have been better if I'd used the actual candlestick to do the mold because they wound up a little bit wider than I would have preferred. I did make one solo peach candle holder that did not follow the long snaky form, but it was made using all of the same rolling and stacking techniques. I also think it still wound up being a very complimentary piece. When I was satisfied with all of my pieces, I took out some rubbing alcohol and Q-tips and started smoothing out any bumps or fingerprints or removing any large hairs. At this point, I of course realized how much dust was actually embedded in the clay and I decided that I was going to spray paint all of the pieces. This was a great decision because after I baked the clay according to the manufacturer's instructions, when I pulled the clay out of the oven, all of the colors had sort of melded together and it was slightly fascinating and also slightly terrifying. I painted the duo piece with cream spray paint and the single piece and the trio with black. And then came the real fun part, splatter paint. Using some acrylic paint and a little bit of water to loosen it up, 
I went to town splatter painting. I did black speckling on the white piece and white speckling on the black piece. And that pretty much finished up the projects. I had so much fun making these clay pieces. I always wanted to learn how to do pottery, take a pottery class. It's very expensive. I've never had the opportunity or funds to do so. So oven baked clay is a really fun and accessible way to get that out of your system. I definitely think we should support independent clay artists when we can, but sometimes you want to do it yourself and that's what this channel is all about. Anyway, that's all folks. I hope you're feeling inspired to recreate some of these projects or do something similar and I hope you enjoyed having this relaxing sick day with me. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.